Hi, my name is Lewis Carroll. Okay, uh, let's talk about steroids. Um, if you're lifting weights and you want to gain a lot more muscle, um, it's no secret that steroids can do that for you. The problem is keeping that muscle that you gain from steroids. There's all sorts of types of steroids that you can take uh, as far as name brands, like there's Dianabol and Anadrol and Parabol and Depot and, and things like that. And usually uh, the bodybuilders are stacking two or three different kinds at a time including some sort of uh, synthetic testosterone. Um, the trick is getting a net gain out of steroids. Uh, you're going to go on steroids for four to six weeks, probably six weeks, maybe eight weeks. And eventually you got to get off because the gains stop coming and then you realize you're just taking a health risk. And, um, and so you get off of the steroids. Well, when you get off of the steroids, you're no longer uh, ingesting or, or shooting uh, synthetic testosterone into your body and so your testosterone levels greatly drop and while you're on it you're shut down anyway I mean your own uh, testosterone producing system your, your pathway is not going to function when you're on uh, steroids so when you get off now you're in this precarious time where you're waiting for your own testosterone levels to come back up and in the meantime you're losing muscle uh, and that's the problem with steroids, is uh, getting a net gain out of it. Because when you get off, you're likely to lose everything that you gained, all of it. Um, unless you're doing something to keep your own testosterone production going. Uh, the current methods that uh, I believe are being used right now, Clomid is one, which is a laboratory-produced drug that um, it has the ability to latch onto the receptor sites in the hypothalamus that are designed for estrogen. But it's not estrogen. Clomid is not an estrogen, but it, it can uh, fill the receptor sites on the hypothalamus. And when that happens, the hypothalamus thinks that there must not be very much testosterone because the hypothalamus doesn't measure testosterone. That's our belief. You know, The belief is that the hypothalamus measures estrogen. So if you have lots of testosterone, then you're going to have more of that testosterone being converted into estrogen by aromatase, and the hypothalamus measures estrogen. So when Clomid uh, is in the body, it goes in and resides in the receptor sites in the hypothalamus, and then the hypothalamus thinks that there isn't much estrogen in the system. So the theory is that it releases more gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which then triggers the pituitary gland to release more luteinizing hormone, which then triggers the Leydig cells in the male testicles to start producing more testosterone. And that's how Clomid works. Uh, it does seem to work, um, but there's some issues with it. There are reports where people have said that they've been on Clomid and for some reason it takes away their sex drive and or their ability to, uh, to gain an erection. Uh, or to function properly uh, sexually. So the question is, is that from Clomid or is that from some of these people coming off of their steroid cycles? Well, some of the people that are reporting this weren't doing a steroid cycle. So that would indicate that maybe Clomid might have uh, an effect on your libido that is not what you're looking for. Um, the other thing that's being done for bodybuilders that get off of steroids is uh, human chorionic gonadotropin. Uh, this is a hormone largely found in women, and it helps to build up the placenta so that uh, the woman can give, you know, become pregnant and uh, support the, uh, the egg that's coming down the uh, fallopian tube um, into the uterus. But for men, human chorionic gonadotropin is, it acts just like luteinizing hormone. And luteinizing hormone is something that's secreted by the pituitary gland that causes the... Uh, the testicles to produce testosterone. Well, luteinizing hormone is what you're losing when you start doing steroids. That's basically part of uh, what's being shut down. Um, you know, your hypothalamus isn't going to put out gonadotropin-releasing hormone, and so you're not going to get luteinizing hormone, and you're not going to produce your own testosterone when you're taking steroids uh, from an external source. But human chorionic gonadotropin acts just like luteinizing hormone, and it will cause your testicles to produce um, additional amounts of uh, testosterone. Uh, so 
maybe that's okay, but is it? You know, this is this is where uh, it gets a little it gets a little fuzzy because when you look at how uh, luteinizing hormone is put out by the pituitary gland, it isn't put out in a steady stream. It's uh, called a pulsatile fashion. It's put out in pulses. Every 60 to 90 minutes, you get a shot of luteinizing hormone. And that helps your Leydig cells. Your Leydig cells actually have the receptor sites for luteinizing hormone, and they respond by putting out testosterone. But what is the reason for the pulsatile fashion of luteinizing hormone? And is it really safe to take human chorionic gonadotropin when you're simply increasing your serum levels of that and it's not pulsed? Well, we know from experience that sometimes when you overload receptor sites, the cells that have those receptor sites respond by reducing the number of receptor sites available for a particular messenger like, like luteinizing hormone. So, Putting out luteinizing hormone in a uh, pulsatile fashion, the theory, and it's just a theory, is that that helps to, it will stimulate the receptor sites on the Leydig cells to produce testosterone, but it also won't wear them out or cause resistance or cause a reduction in the number of receptor sites. Um, but if you take human chorionic gonadotropin for an extended length of time, the question is, will that cause resistance in the Leydig cells, or will it cause a reduction in the uh, receptor sites available, both of which would be bad. Um, but that's what bodybuilders are doing. They're doing clomid and HCL, or HCG rather, uh, human chorionic gonadotropin in order to keep their own testicular function in full swing while they're taking steroids. And that way they've been able to get a better net gain. Now, there is a, another way to go, and that would be the time machine. The time machine uses something completely different. I mean, we're using, uh, you know, boron, uh, we're using uh, deaspartic acid, those other methods for taking testosterone up and jump-starting your own testosterone-producing system uh, when you get off the of steroids. The time machine can be used uh, for that kind of a function. But the time machine also has indirect methods for increasing testosterone in the male body. Uh, one thing that most of you already know is that the majority of testosterone is bound up by a, uh, a protein called uh, sex hormone binding globulin, which is put out by the liver. And, uh, and it, it, engulfs, it engulfs the, uh, the testosterone molecule and, uh, and your body gets rid of it. But what people don't realize is how all these hormones and, and uh, and things work in the body. Everything is just so really interrelated. Um, sex hormone binding globulin is regulated by IGF-1. And it was shown in a clinical trial that when you raise IGF-1, you decrease sex hormone binding globulin. And this is something that uh, the time machine does very well. It will raise uh, growth hormone in the body and and which will trigger an increase in IGF-1, which will then trigger a decrease in sex hormone binding globulin, which will then trigger an increase in free or bioavailable testosterone. Without even trying to raise your overall testosterone, it should result in an increase in your free testosterone, which is the testosterone that's doing all the work. So here's a method that that we have available to us to raise testosterone in the body of a bodybuilder who's getting off of steroids by a completely indirect approach. But there's a path there that is not being utilized by bodybuilders. They're going with uh, Clomid, which has its associated side effects, and HCG, which also has its associated side effects on the male body, versus Time Machine, which to date we haven't found any side effects that are negative. I'm not saying that uh, that you should just go with uh, the time machine if you're doing steroids and you're trying to jumpstart your own testicular function after you get off the of steroids. There are a number of methods that are available. There is Clomid, there's, there is HCG, but keep in mind that there is also the time machine. The time machine can work wonderfully for that. And as a matter of fact, we do have some people with weights that, uh, that are experienced with uh, um, taking steroids, and the time machine is working out well for them. Uh, 
in terms of their libido, lack of uh, negative uh, side effects, and their function, uh, everything has been working out very well. So it's another way to go.